So there was an article that was recently um, put out on the you know for the Washington Post, and it was a piece by a an a, actually a corporate Democrat and a uh, former governor of Pennsylvania. His name is Ed Rendell. He used to I remember he used to be a pundit and contributor for MSNBC for many many years. He used to appear on that that channel. I don't know if he still does. I don't think he still does. But he was appearing on there for many many years. He would be on Keith Olbermann's show and Rachel Maddow's show and all those different you know all those different people and. But these days, yeah, he's definitely a big-time corporate Democrat, big-time supporter of Hillary Clinton. Um, you know, best friends with I think I think with Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. So yeah, he was a you know, he's a big-time supporter of hers, and that's why it was surprising when he actually came out with an article that criticized um, Elizabeth Warren and criticized her for her hip for her hypocrisy regarding big money and the fact that she. Um, calls up you know the the existence of you know high dollar fundraisers and bit you know taking big money donors and then uh, like i said in the last segment um or previewed for this segment at least um doing um you know m moving her money so the m money that she has in her campaign conference for her senate campaign and then moving it into her presidential campaign so yeah that's definitely a sneaky move for sure and this is something that randell called out and so so he did this um, in the Washington Post, like I said, and the title of this article is, I like Elizabeth Warren, too bad she's a hypocrite. So this article is from September 11th, um, so about a week ago. Um, so let me get into the, into the kind of the details here, and then I'll just give my commentary as usual as I go along. It says, I like Elizabeth Warren. I like her a lot. Too bad she's a hypocrite. I think Warren has been a great senator and her work in setting up the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau was terrific. The CFPB is the best protection that ordinary Americans have from financial, financial institutions that prey on them. In fact, I like her so much that when she ran for Senate in 2018, I co-chaired a couple of her fundraisers, I'm sorry, a, a couple of fundraisers for her and donated a combined $4,500 to her campaign. Shortly after announcing her candidacy, candidacy for the Democratic presidential nomination in February, Warren said she would shun high-dollar high, high fundraising events. And then quoting her here, it says, That means no fancy receptions or big money fundraisers, only with people who can write the big checks, Warren wrote in an email to supporters. Now, Warren has every right to make that pledge, even if she had obtained significant contributions from donors in the past. Doing that didn't make, a make her a hypocrite, but there are two other reasons why the description applies. First, because she transferred $10.4 million from her Senate re-election campaign to her presidential campaign fund. More than $6 million came in contributions of $1,000 and up. Just so you guys know, the, the, the amount of money that is considered um, considered like a big donation is two hundred dollars and up. She the, in this case it was six million dollars came just from a thousand dollars donations, thousand dollar donations and more. And then the max I think he mentioned it earlier. The max is twenty. I don't know. I mean I guess he's going to mention it later because um, I read it earlier. But it says um, th like I said. But I've said this before is the fact that um, the maximum that every um, individual donation can be is twenty eight hundred dollars. And um, it's possible that a good chunk of her donations are twenty eight hundred dollars too. Um, Whereas somebody like Bernie Sanders doesn't have that, Joe Biden has that, you know, Pete Buttigieg has that, Kamala Harris has that. All the corporate, you know, corporate Democrats have those kind of get those kind of uh, donations and contributions from um, from you know rich donors essentially because they have all that money to give. I mean, no regular person has twenty eight hundred dollars just lying around to give to somebody, let alone a thousand dollars. Um, so he says, more than $6 billion came in contributions of $1,000 and up, as the New York Times recently noted. The senator appears to be trying to have it both ways. Get the political upside from eschewing donations from higher level donors and running a grassroots campaign, while at the same time using money obtained from those donors in 2018. The $10.4 million gave, uh, gave Warren a substantial head start in building a presidential campaign staff and doing other things for which money is essential. If she wasn't being hypocritical, she would have taken only the dollars raised in small, in smaller increments from her Senate race and transferred those into her presidential account. 
And then the second part uh, he goes into here, it says, second, Warren attacked former Vice President Joe Biden for holding a kickoff fundraiser in Philadelphia in April, which she criticized as, quote, a swanky private fundraiser for wealthy donors in an email to supporters the next day. Well, I helped organize that affair, and I thought her attack was extremely hypocritical because nearly 20 of us who attended the Biden fundraiser had also given her $2,000 or more in 2018 at closed-door fundraisers in, quote, swanky locations. So just pause here for, for a second and realize what's happening. What Ed Randell is saying here is he's saying, listen, why are you criticizing these, uh, you know, it's a two-parter. It's a twofer, for, to be fair. He's saying, why are you criticizing these high-dollar fundraisers when you're the, you're involved in them as just as much as, or almost just as much as Joe Biden and every other candidate is? But he's also making a second point. He's saying, why are you, like, he's basically making the case for how wonderful high-dollar fundraisers are. He's not only calling her out for criticizing them, but it, it's not like he's coming at it from an angle of, hey, listen, you know, you shouldn't, you know, these, these high dollar fundraisers are terrible. We shouldn't be doing these things, you know, where um, politicians are taking just, you know, loads and loads of cash from like big donors and stuff. We should be focusing on small dollar donations like Bernie Sanders would. He's not saying something like that. He's saying, no, no, no. You, need, you can't criticize these events. These are wonderful. We need to give, uh, you know, as many thousands of dollars to our candidates as possible because these swanky fundraisers and, and high-dollar fundraisers are wonderful. You, we need to keep doing them, and you need, to st you need to stop criticizing them. But, of course, like I said, it's a twofer because she, he's also pissed that she's criticizing them. But to go out there and, like, talk about how, how like, you know, like, you know, Calling her a hypocrite, it, like calling her a hypocrite is fine. Of course, that's a good point, you know, and, and that's a perfectly fine argument to make. But when you're going out there and you're saying like, oh, why are you attacking them as if they're so wonderful, as if these high dollar fundraisers are like genius and, you know, wonderful and totally like normal thing, a normal thing to do. He's going out there and saying, stop attacking them so that we can do more of them and stop making, you know, making us look bad, essentially. So it's a really like, it's a really fucking, you know, narcissistic move based uh, you know from move by by Ed Rendell here and he's trying to pretend as if these things are wonderful and we should keep doing them and how dare you criticize them um but at least uh, to his credit at least he's criticizing Warren for taking part in those fundraisers while simultaneously attacking them which is totally which is probably in a lot of ways just as bad as Ed Randell advocating for the fundraisers. <laughs> so they're both kind of in the wrong in this situation here. Um, but in this case, at least Warren, uh, at, least, at least in this case, Ed Randell is a little bit more principled in just saying, hey, I'm in favor of high dollar fundraisers and I'm not criticizing that. I love them. And then he's, but he's calling out the person, in this case, Elizabeth Warren, for attacking the fundraisers, even though she's taking part in them. It's, yeah, it's, he's got a point there. You can't, you can't t call him out for that. Um, you can just call him out for being a typical corporate Democrat, whereas Elizabeth Warren is hiding behind a, you know, hiding behind the curtain and pretending, you know, to to be totally, pretending to be a, you know, total progress, you know, progressive populist when behind closed doors, you know, she's obviously taking part in these in these events. Um, let's continue on here. It says um, Warren didn't seem to have any trouble taking our money in 2018, but suddenly we were pr we were power brokers and influence peddlers in 2019. This uh, the year before we were wonderful. Um, I co-chaired co one of the events for the senator and received a glowing handwritten thank you letter from her for my hard work. <laughs> wow. And then all of a sudden now she's criticizing these, these events. Wow. Specifically, these ones coming from Ed Randell, too. Let's see. Um, it, says, it says, it seemed odd to some of us who gave her money that Warren was experiencing an epiphany less than 12 months later. It's one thing to fashion a campaign that relies on grassroots fundraising, but it's another to go out of your way to characterize um, as power brokers and influence peddler peddlers, the very people whose support you have previously courted. Um, it says, now, War now Warren is the first person to have been hip hypocritical about fundraising. So apparently he's going to call out a couple of other people here. It says Barack Obama, who I consider one of the greatest presidents in my lifetime. <laughs> 
laugh along with me, vowed not to take any money from the political action committees, which is super PACs, or just PACs, of Wall Street firms in his 2008 campaign. At the same time, his campaign took in millions of dollars in contributions from individuals who worked for Wall Street firms. But the news media basically gave Obama a free ride and didn't point out the blatant hypocrisy of trying to win credit for shunning contributions from Wall Street firms while taking tons of money from people who work for those same Wall Street firms. Politics can make people do peculiar things. I also take issue with the notion raised by Warren in her criticism of the Biden fundraiser in April, that people who give the maximum allowable individual donation of $2,800 to a presidential campaign are doing so because they believe it will get them a federal job, win their business a federal contract, or even gain special access. <laughs> Is he denying this as if that doesn't happen? Come on now, man. Donors who give $2,800 for the most part are doing so because they believe strongly that the candidate would make a great leader. <laughs> yeah, right. Or maybe they believe in the candidate's values or policies on the important issues challenging the country. Are there some people who give or raise money in presidential campaigns with ulterior motives? Sure. <laughs> Finally admits it. Sure, but I'm not confident. But I'm confident that the crowd at the Biden fundraiser gave money to him for the same reason I did. We believe that he will be the best person to lead the country, to restore the United States as a moral leadership in the world, to get things done in Washington, to create opportunity for all Americans, and to protect the nation's vulnerable citizens. I mean, come on, man. There's no, there's no way you fucking believe that the people that give donations to X candidate is is doing it because of the goodness of their heart. You have to be the biggest. You have to be the biggest dunce to think not only is that true, but that you know you can make that argument and people are gonna fall for it. Now, yeah, there are dunces out there. There's idiots out there that definitely, you know, they they buy into that. They buy into that talking point. There's no doubt about it. You ask any kind of, you know, Democratic loyalist and, and you know, person that, you know, loves the Democratic Party and loves Barack Obama, loves Hillary Clinton, loves Nancy Pelosi, and loves Chuck Schumer. Yeah, definitely. There's people out there that will, you know, obviously make that case. But that's because they are, they, in their minds, they've ingrained the fact that it's okay because if Democrats do something, it must be fine. So now Republicans do the same thing. Now, if this was just something the Republicans were doing, for example, the involvement with the Koch brothers, you know, the Koch brothers giving money to the Republican Party. By the way, we're going to get to a story where the Koch brothers are giving money to Democrats, too. But that's we'll get to that later on. But as far as when it comes to, to you know, the Koch brothers going and giving money to, you know, giving money to the Republican Party, Democrats always, when you, if you ask any Democrat out there, so like the voters, and even just Democrats in general, they hate that. They're like, the Koch brothers, the Koch brothers, oh my God, the Koch brothers are so bad. The Koch brothers are so evil. Now they're right, but then what do they do? They go and take money from George Soros. They go and take money from, you know, Jeffrey, uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein. They go take money from um, Weinstein, the, what was his name? The guy that... Uh, got charged with sexual assault or sexual harassment. That was Hillary Clinton's friend. Um, yeah, whatever his name was. Anyway, so that guy. And then, um, you know, whatever. Throw out any kind of rich donor, you know, uh, whatever, celebrity donors out there and shit. Yeah, they, they do that stuff constantly. And But somehow the Koch brothers are not, you know... They're they're inherently evil, but no other candidate is. So basically, what they're saying, like what people like Ed Rendell say, they say not only do when the Democrats do it, is it okay, and they have totally good, you know, wonderful intentions, and they're just trying to help people. What did he say here? He said, um, it says donors who give twenty hundred dollars for the most part are doing so because they believe strongly that the candidate would make a great leader. No, what they believe is that that candidate is going to, like he denied, is going to do favors for them, but it's also the candidate that is going to maintain the status quo. And he's going to do all the things that the establishment wants and the establishment wants to maintain. So they want to maintain that status quo of just the same old shit, same old, you know, selling out to big corporations and, and doing favors for big, you know, uh, bi you know big banks and, and uh, you know, oil companies and, and fossil fuel in the fossil fuel industry and 
you know, just caring about social issues. So like uh, just push for, you know, LGBTQ issues and uh, women's rights and civil rights, which honestly they're not really that great on when it comes to civil rights. But, you know, just do the kind of like, the, do the, the kind of the identity politics, social issues type stuff. But then when it comes to economic issues, when it comes to foreign policy, so they're taking money from the military industrial complex, when it comes to that kind of stuff, oh, that's wonderful. That stuff is perfectly fine. It's perfectly normal. As long as you're like not a fucking anti-gay bigot and and, you know racist that's okay then you're perfectly fine you're perfectly fine to take money from that organization or from that donor or, or that company that you know multinational corporation you're perfectly fine and you're moral so that's what is you know this ed rendell guy thinks and other than the fact that he's calling out elizabeth warren for being a hypocrite which she is and she's going out there and pretending to shun you know high dollar fundraisers and big donors when she's in reality taking part in, you know, taking part in, in being part of that club that the rest of us is, you know, the, the rest of us obviously are not in and we don't really want to be part of anyway. But, um, you know, she's a, she's part of that big club, but she wants to pretend like she's not. So he's right in obviously calling her out for that. But when you're talking about how these, you know, these you know, donors giving money is like totally like a normal thing and it's perfectly fine and it shouldn't be, you know, denounced and it shouldn't be shunned. It's, you and I know that's ridiculous. I mean, these people are so stuck in their bubble and unfortunately Elizabeth Warren is stuck in that bubble or she's, like Ed Rendell is saying, is saying, or I'm sorry, is, is saying all the things that she wants us to hear, progressives want to hear, while in reality she's, be, you know, behind closed doors, she's, you know, sucking up to these donors and, suck, you know, doing these fundraisers for the Democratic Party, which is obviously in bed with big corporations. So she's definitely going out there and doing all these fundraisers to serve the Democratic Party. You notice Bernie Sanders does not do that. Even Tulsi Gabbard, if, I, if, I, if I'm correct. In assuming Tulsi Gabbard also doesn't do that, but since Bernie Sanders is not a, he's not technically a Democrat when it, you know, because he's an independent senator. When it, now he's running for the Democratic nomination, so that's fine. But when it comes to being part of the party, he is not. He's an independent, and. But Elizabeth Warren is perfectly fine with doing that. So Warren wants to be. She wants to have one foot in and one foot out with the establishment. You know what I'm saying? She wants to be part of the establishment, but also wants to like, you know, you know, take shots at them every, take pot shots at them every now and then. It's almost similar to what Hillary Clinton did in 2016 when she said, "Yeah, I, you know, totally go and I go out there and I call out the big banks and I call out the people that you know are screwing over everybody and hosing them and shit." But um, you know, but then in reality, when she was going and giving, you know. She was going out and giving like, you know, 200, what was it, 200, $225,000 speeches to Goldman Sachs and different, or you know, different multinational, big, you know, multinational banks and, you know, uh, banking institutions and shit. So, and, and these people, the heads of these companies, these, the CEOs knew that whatever Hillary Clinton was saying in her speeches or whatever she was, you know, whatever hard, you know, harsh stuff she was saying against the big banks, in reality, she didn't mean that. So they were like, it was like to them, they were just letting like these CEOs, they knew it was like whatever Hillary was saying, she didn't really mean it when it came to cracking down on the corruption of the big banks because she, because she was in their pocket. So she was in their pocket and they knew that she, they could rely on her to just go and put out that rhetoric to get elected and then behind closed doors, assuming, you know, assuming she would win the, the presidency, which she didn't because she lost to a fucking, you know, fascist monster like Trump. But, you know, once she would become president, she would do the favors for them. But in, you know, but in public, she would talk about, yeah, I'm a total progressive and, you know, I'm a progressive that gets things done and stuff so, like that's. Essentially, that's the, what the case is with Elizabeth Warren, but she's masking it a little bit better because she's actually putting out a lot of good, you know, progressive rhetoric. But when it comes to actually what she truly believes, Elizabeth Warren is not a progressive. Again, like I said before, she is Bernie light. She's diet Bernie. She is not. Bernie Sanders. She will never be Bernie Sanders. She's even gone as far as saying that I'm a capitalist to the bone, and you know, I, you know, I, not a democratic socialist. I don't believe in democratic socialism. She's gone out there and voted in favor of, uh, you know, Donald Trump's military budget. She's, uh, you know, confirmed Ben Carson to be the head of the housing urban development, uh, housing of a housing and urban development, which is a, it's a uh, a branch of the um, Trump administration or you know a presidential administration, and. 
Um, and then she's, you know, like I said, she's done the high dollar fundraisers and, you know, as I profiled in the segment, obviously in this, in these articles and stuff. Um, and just, uh, a final note on that. I wanted to, um, direct you guys to this New York times article. I'll put it in the description box along with the Washington post article too, but it's this article from the New York times, which goes into a much, much greater detail about how Elizabeth Warren was involved in, you know, all these kind of like taking the big money and doing the high, high dollar fundraisers. So the title of this article is how Elizabeth Warren raised big money before she denounced big money. So if you guys want to check that out, I'm going to put it in the description box below. Check that out. It's a really, really interesting article. It's very, very long, but it's obviously it's long because it's extensive and it gets into a lot of interesting details that you guys would want to, you know, want to know. I think, in fact, I think Ed Rendell, the, the, the guy who wrote the article that I just read for you guys, I think he mentioned the New York Times article too. So he obviously did his research. He knew what he was talking about, but Ed Rendell is a corporate Democrat and he's a corporate Democrat extraordinaire and he loves big money. He loves corp corruption and, you know, corporate Democrats and stuff because he is a corporate Democrat. And, um, you know, it's, it's just like these people, they want the system to maintain maintain its corporate its corporatization and they don't want it to change and they know that Elizabeth Warren and, and I mean Ed Vendell said it there himself. He wants Joe Biden to become president. Does he want Joe Biden to become president because he has great ideas? No. He wants to keep he wants Joe Biden to be president because Joe Biden is gonna maintain the status quo. He's gonna do what the corporations and the big and you know the, the establishment, the political establishment wants. The Democratic establishment loves him and the Republicans love him because he's gonna maintain what the, the, the establishment wants. And Ed Vendell knows this and that's why he's done doing so many high dollar fundraisers with Joe Biden and talking about how wonderful they are, you know, whereas Elizabeth Warren is going out there and saying they're, sh they're terrible and they're, they're, you know, shouldn't be doing, you know, shouldn't be taking part in them, shouldn't be doing them, even though she's doing them. So Elizabeth Warren is pulling the wool over our eyes, whereas somebody like Ed Rendell, who's a corporate Democrat, and, you know, he's, he's pretending, or you know, he's, he's saying that those, you know, these dollar, these high dollar fundraisers and, uh, you know, whatever donors, donor, you know, big donor events and stuff are wonderful. So at least in his, at least with uh, Ed Rendell, we can know that, you know, at least he's being honest, whereas Elizabeth Warren is just pretending to be something she's not.